Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here for a couple of reasons. I'm gonna get ready. And also I have posted, here's the thing. I post things on Instagram all the time, questions about upcoming videos I'm gonna film, and then I wait four months to film them. And that's pretty much what happened with this one. I have posted, maybe not four months ago, but quite a while ago on Instagram stories that I was gonna do a Q&A video while I was getting ready and to post your questions. So I got quite a few questions. A lot of them were repeat questions, so I'm gonna make sure I get to those especially. But I thought I would just sit down and get ready with y'all and answer those questions. If you have any additional ones, like if you weren't, I know some of you weren't on Instagram, um, and you want me to do another one, then just leave your questions down in the comment section. I am wearing the Beauty of Joseon SPF, which has no coverage whatsoever. So we're working with my typical redness that I have when I wake up in the morning, and we'll just get started. If I don't mention the products that I'm using, I will have everything listed and linked below per usual. I feel like I should probably start off at the beginning per se. And this is a question I got asked a lot. It was definitely a repeat question. And it kind of, well, a couple of them, but they kind of go hand in hand. And basically it was, where did I train to be a makeup artist? How did I get into makeup artistry? Has it always been part of my career? Am I a full-time makeup artist? So I'm gonna kind of answer all of that together. And I know that if you've been watching me for any amount of time for a few years, you've likely heard this story before, but I'm gonna start anyways. No, this has not always been my career. I have currently been doing this for about eight years now. As far as makeup artistry goes, I own my own freelance business. So I don't work out of any kind of salon or anything like that. It's just my own business. You either come to me or I come to you. I have my undergrad in communications and then I have my master's in education. And I was, I, you know, I worked at a school, I was in administration for preschool. I had a lot of different jobs within the educational sphere of things. And then I have always been someone who loved product, hence my YouTube channel. Always, always been a love of mine. And my friends knew this. And a friend of mine, a good friend of mine was getting married. She was having a destination wedding down in Florida and I was gonna be there. She knew that I had all of the products anyways. And she was like, look, you're gonna be there anyways. Why don't you just like bring a little bit of extra stuff down and do my makeup? And that way I don't have to worry about finding someone in a different state. I'm not gonna have time to get a trial done. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm not exactly well versed on doing makeup on other people, but okay, you know, like any excuse to pack some extra makeup, right? So I did, we actually drove. So I took this big old train case worth of makeup with me and I did her makeup. I did her mom's makeup, truly not thinking anything of it. And then I left there and I thought to myself, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. That's it. This is it, that I want to do this. I loved every minute of it. I loved the wedding aspect of it, which is why I'm predominantly bridal now. I loved everything about it. And so I went back to, you know, my everyday life working. And then I started really researching like schools and where I could go. I didn't want to go to cosmetology school because I knew that hair was not my thing. It wasn't what I was interested in or passionate about but I found a school that's just for makeup in Nashville and I looked into it and I remember, I mean, I remember this like it was yesterday, Chad was out cutting the grass and I went out to him and I made him stop what he was doing. And I said, so I found this school that's just makeup. I think I'm going to quit my job and go back and do that full time. Now, if y'all are not aware, Chad is an entrepreneur. He has been in medical sales for goodness, 14, 15 years now but he is still an entrepreneur at heart. And I was very lucky for that because he was like, okay, literally, that's what he said, okay. <laughs> so that's what I did. I went back to school for makeup and I have been doing that ever since. So no, it's not always been my career, but I envision some aspect of beauty will be in my career until I retire because I absolutely adore it. Here's one and it kind of, flows off that topic of Chad being an entrepreneur. He is 
and I'm not just saying this because I'm his wife, okay? I tell people all the time, if I didn't love him so much, I'd hate him because he's truly good at every single thing he does. But he is a really talented photographer and videographer. And someone asked if he sells his photographs because I do repost often um, his photos on my stories, especially. And he does sell his photographs. He doesn't sell all of them. At least he doesn't have them all listed. He has an Etsy page. I will link it down below. But if you see one, like if I post one or something and you're like, oh, I really am interested in that, just message me or you can message him and we can fix you up. So thank you to whoever asked that. Okay, here's another repeat question. I know I've touched on this in the past, but I haven't really elaborated on it. And there was quite a few questions on whether or not I'm still working for Jane Iredell. So this time last year or around May, I took a job as a sales rep for Jane Iredell and made like an announcement video about it. And really like, I, I just really thought that that was like the next step, right? Because I thought to myself, I knew that I was going to be in beauty in my career some way, somehow. And I just thought it was like a next logical step for me. So I did that. I did it for four or five months and the company is fantastic. The people are fantastic. The position just was not for me. It took a lot of my time. I was traveling a lot. Um, I just was missing out on so much with my kids and I just, it just wasn't for me. So I was able to switch to like a part-time artistry position within the company and hung up my sales rep position. It was the best decision. I'm glad I did it because I know now that I've tried it and that it's just not particularly for me. But again, the people and the company are fabulous. As you all know, I talk about them all the time. And that kind of leads me into another question I got, which was I could only pick one makeup brand to own products from and use for the rest of my life. What would it be? And I quite honestly did not even have to think twice about this. Jane Ardell, a thousand percent. If you have not seen any of my videos where I truly rave over their products, search my channel for Jane Ardell and you'll see. They make stellar products. And honestly, I mean, there's a couple things. There's not one single brand that I can say I love absolutely everything that brand makes. It's just not something I've ever found to be true and likely never will but jane comes really really close i trust their products so much i use them in my kit they just work for me so if i had to it would be very very sad i mean first world problems completely aware it would be very sad if i had to give up all of my other brands that i have and love but if i had to it would definitely be jane also because they just have such a, an array, like a wide selection of products that I honestly would have multiple things to choose from in every category, which is important in picking just one brand. I love this next question because I would love to know this about people too. And I feel like it's just fun. Somebody asked what my go-to Starbucks drink is. And I am one of those people who definitely is a creature of habit. So I do have a go-to drink and I rarely ever stray from it. I love like the seasonal drinks they have, the not good for you full of sugar drinks that they have, but I typically let like my kids or Chad order that and just have a sip of it. But my personal go-to drink is a venti because I like coffee, almond milk cappuccino with sugar-free vanilla syrup. That's just my go-to. Extra hot. Can't forget the extra hot part because I am not a cold coffee drinker. I'm just not. I can't, like, if that's the only option, which I don't think there's ever been a time in my life where it was only optional or the only option was to drink cold coffee. But if it was, I would. I am not a fan of iced coffee. I know there's a lot of people that aren't a fan of hot coffee, my teenager is one of them. She got her mama's love for coffee, but she only likes iced. So whenever I order, I always order extra hot. I love this question so much. How's my dog doing? Oh, I love that y'all love my dog as much as I do. 
My dog is Zeus, if you don't know, and he is an English Mastiff. He is the absolute love of our life. He is, oh my goodness gracious. I was gonna say he's four and a half, but he's honestly closer to five. <gasps> Fabulous. Um, we did find out last year that he has some kind of autoimmune disorder. We don't exactly know what. Um, so he does have to be on a very, very, very low dose of prednisone, probably for the rest of his life to keep kind of the symptoms of that. But honestly, it's like super low dose, especially for his size. He's 180 pounds. But other than that, he's fabulous. He's the best guard dog in the world. He's the sweetest person in the world. He loves company. He loves it when people come over to our house. He's social and he's very loving as long as Chad or I or the girls invite you in. If we're not inviting for you to come in, he is not inviting you to come in. <laughs> but if we like say, oh, hi, hi, how you doing? Hey, Zeus, look who it is, then he's fine. Um, but he has to have that kind of okay and go ahead from us, which I think is pretty normal for a lot of dogs, but he's, he's just fabulous. And we've been out at our house. We built two years ago. We've been out here two years today. The day I'm filming this is our two year anniversary of moving into this house. And I think the FedEx and the UPS guys are just now getting used to him. <laughs> he's quite the character, but he is oh so amazing. And the only bad thing about Mastiffs, this is my second, Chad's third, is that their life expectancy is just not as much as a normal dog. But we are taking advantage of every single day that we have him and love him so much. Somebody asked what my t favorite type of facial is. And I think that is kind of a loaded question for me because it really depends on the results I'm wanting and how I'm feeling. For example, if I want like a treatment facial, I love a hydrofacial. Love it. I get them often. If I want something more relaxing, then I'll go get something like a spa facial, which I haven't had in a really long time. There is a spa here that does in Nashville that does um, Biologique Recherche, which I've never used their products, but you know, my girl Abby does, and she posted that picture of her getting that facial, and I'm like, oh, that looks so comforting and just relaxing. So I may end up going and getting one of those. But as far as like a treatment facial, definitely hydrofacial. And that goes into the next question, which is so funny because someone asked, who's your favorite esthetician? And it was my esthetician who asked that. So Amber, if you're watching, girl, you know it's you. It is rare for anyone else to touch my skin. So if she heard me say that I'm thinking about going to get a, a Biologique Recherche facial, she's probably gonna text me any minute and tell me, what am I thinking? But if you are in the Nashville area, definitely check Amber out. I've talked about her a lot. She's been on my channel. She's awesome. We are college friends and she has taken care of my skin for the past 20 plus years. Someone asked what my favorite eyeshadow look is. And I've never really thought about this before, but I would, if I'm thinking about like the kind of look that I go to the most, it is very straightforward. It is a crease color, typically something warm because I tend to gravitate towards colors with warmer undertones. And it is some kind of shimmer on the lid. And if I had to pick a tone or a color, it would probably fall into the peachy undertone. That is my favorite color. Okay, it's my favorite color, period. So like somebody says, what's your favorite color? It's peach or coral or something along the lines of this shirt. As you've probably seen, that's the majority of what I wear. Or if someone asks, what's my favorite makeup color? It's peach. So peach blush, peach eyeshadow, definitely what I gravitate to the most. So I would say some kind of peachy shimmer on the lid and a warm tone in the crease. Put the little warm tone under my eye and I'm good to go. That is my go-to look. Like if I could only do one look for the rest of the time, that would be it. See what I mean by guard dog? But then he would just sniff you to death if you came in. I say that there was one guy that came to our house with a painter at our old house when we were getting ready for it to sell. And I believe in a dog's intuition, I really do. And Zeus did not like that guy. 
and made it very evident, even after we welcomed him in, that he did not like him. But for the majority of the time, he would just sniff you. Okay, a couple more questions. A couple of people, actually, I think three different people asked this question of what my favorite foundation is. Actually, one was, what foundation do you reach for the most? And then one was, what's your favorite foundation? And actually, the answer is different. Now, to be fair, I do change up my foundations every single day. So when I decided which one I was going to say for which foundation I use the most, I thought back over the course of the last year and picked the one that I do feel like I probably, if I wrote it down, have reached for the most times over that time period. And that would have to be my Jane Ardell Beyond Matte. I've actually gone through one of these and had to repurchase. And when you see the amount of foundations I have, that is quite a feat. So that's another thing that told me, hey, you use this one a whole lot. I've talked about it a whole lot. I'm going to do an updated review on it because I am still in the middle of my Jane Ardell Foundation review series. And I think that one's going to be the one I do next. But it is something that can be a little misleading in its name because I don't find it to be super matte at all. I feel like it is more of a natural finish, not too dewy, not too matte, but it is extremely long wearing. I do have multiple colors of it in my kit. I feel like it looks great under both of the Jane Ardell powder foundations. But my favorite combination is the Beyond Matte with the Amazing Base Loose Powder on top. I just feel like it makes such a beautiful finish on the skin. So I would say that one is the one that I reach for the most. However, my favorite has to go to the Shantikai Future Skin Cushion Foundation. And the reason that that is not also in my foundation that I reach for the most spot is because it is very expensive. <laughs> and I don't want to go through it too fast. It does come with a refill. You do get a good amount of product. It does last longer than I honestly anticipated it lasting when I first got it, but it is hands down one of the most beautiful foundations on the skin that I have ever encountered. It is truly a filter in a bottle, and I know people say that about a lot of foundations. I don't think I've ever said it except for that one. It looks like you're putting nothing on your skin, but then when you're done, it looks like you have perfected skin. It's fabulous. Love everything about it. So definitely my favorite, just not my most reach for. And I'm just gonna do one more while I finish up lips. I think there, I know there were more than this, so sorry if I did not get to yours, but somebody asked my top three skincare products. That is not easy. I will tell you what I tell people when they come for a makeup lesson. I know that not a ton of people are very high maintenance like I am when it comes to skincare and do not want to have umpteen kajillion, that's like a real number by the way, <laughs> steps in their skincare routine. I totally understand that. So if you don't want all of that, then I think to me, it is essential to have some kind of vitamin C, some kind of retinol, and an SPF. Those are like the top three. So if I had to answer that question and say the top three, I would say those. Now, out of those, I would have to say that my favorite vitamin C still goes to Truth Treatments, Transdermal C Serum. It's a tetrahexdecal exorbate. Some people who can't tolerate l exorbic vitamin C, which is the purest form, like to go for derivatives. That is a wonderful derivative in my opinion. It works so good for my skin. I have tried L-exorbic acids even recently and I don't dislike them, but I still go back to the truth treatments. I feel like my skin likes it the most. So I know you gotta figure out what kind your skin likes the most and that's fine. I just think some kind of vitamin C. And then as far as retinol, I have quite a few favorites. Now, if you want the gold standard, it's gonna be tretinoin. If you can't tolerate that, which is the prescription form of retinol. If you can't tolerate it, if that irritates your skin too much, then I would definitely look into the Medicate, which I will link down below because that so far is a very close second. So the Medicate, which is a retinaldehyde serum, and then the Sente has a retinol serum that I really like. So I will, um, 
I'll link all three of those down below. I'll link the vitamin C and then the SPF. I will put up a card for my SPF video. If you do nothing, if you do nothing, wear SPF. Seriously, I don't honestly care if you get any of the other stuff, wear SPF every single day. Day. So those are the top three that are my favorite and that I would highly recommend to anyone else. Now let me do my fragrance of the day before we head off. I'm going to start with a fragrance oil. I talked about the oil perfumery fragrance oils in my favorites in the last video. This one is the impression of Mojave Ghost by Byredo. Now I have not done this layering combo yet, so I have no idea how it's going to turn out, but that's part of the fun when it comes to fragrances in my opinion. Mojave Ghost is not my favorite from Byredo. My favorite is um, De Los Santos, but I don't think Oil Perfumery has that. I need to look, but this one is very good. And Byredo scents in general do not last the longest on me, so I love the oil versions. And then I'm gonna take my Fragrance Du Bois Oud Orange Intense. So the Mojave Ghost on me is, is more woody and this is more tropical, so we're gonna see how that works layering. So far, so good. I'll put down in the description box how it how it wore for me. But hopefully you enjoyed this. I, I always think it's fun to, sometimes to answer some of y'all's questions and it's been years since I've done one of these. So again, if you don't have Instagram or if you thought of something else you wanna ask me, I can easily do another one of these maybe next month. So just let me know your questions down below and I will have everything listed and linked that I used on my face, affiliate links, some affiliate codes. As always, I appreciate if you use them to support my channel. I hope you're all staying happy and healthy. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.